this video, we're going to turn pallets into project-ready wood with a showdown between power, leverage, and gravity. Stick around for an overview of these three methods and why one is the best for you. Welcome to another video. My name is Ro, maker and breaker of things on DIY Dot. If this is your first time here and you enjoy DIY projects, making and breaking things, or are on your own maker journey, let's travel together. Just click the subscribe button and bell so you don't miss anything. I spent a few weeks collecting and tearing down dozens of pallets, and in the end, I had a few calluses and a few stacks of project-ready lumber. I made this video to share my experiences and help you pick the best approach for your pallet job. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Let's meet today's contenders. Too good to fight these contenders. First up, we have power. We're supposed to look on water! Unless you've got power! <laughs> that mystical force brought to us by Tesla and Edison allow us to turn rivers of electrical current into horsepower for work. We will use power tools for our matchup, specifically a reciprocal saw and a blade designed for nail embedded applications. Second up is leverage. What's this? Leverage. A method as old as time itself, or at least one that we've had since the dawn of man. This method uses simple tools that provide a mechanical advantage, combining your muscular force with some sort of a lever to get the work done. You may already be familiar with some, including hammers, wrecking and pry bars, and even some specialized tools. Our final contender, gravity. It is nonsense. Newton's best friend and arguably our strongest force in today's competition. This approach is our simplest method, using just a few pieces of scrap wood. We'll be evaluating each method based on its speed, cost, quality, and difficulty. Let's outline a basic how-to for each approach using power. You can choose corded or battery powered, either work well. You'll need a reciprocal saw and for the best results, a blade designed for nail embedded applications. I like these from Diablo and I'll include a link in the description. I found them to be the most effective, and in fact, it only took me one and a half blades to get through all 30 pallets that I tore down. There are two different approaches. For smaller pallets, about 40 inches or less, I found that standing them on their edge was doable. For anything larger, you're gonna need something to lean them against. Or better yet, stack them up on a pair of sawhorses or other work surface and do more than one at a time. Once stood up, leaned or stacked, use the reciprocal saw blade to wedge between the pallet and the support. Cut through the nails. The result will leave nails embedded in your wood, but not in a dangerous way that requires removal. Depending on the nature of your final project, it might not matter that the nails were in, or you might find ways to cut strategically around them. I found the angle of the blade was the most important thing to get right in order to do this quickly. First, use a nine or 12 inch blade and place it underneath the board you're working on and onto the corner from the opposite side underneath. Using leverage. One day, proper leverage. First, to save your back, I suggest you using a tool with a long handle. Just place the claw part of the tool between the support and the board you're trying to remove. And then apply pressure and weight to lift the board off of the support. Continue to the next point where that board meets the next support and repeat. When you're done, you'll have a board with lots of sharp nails sticking out of it. So handle it carefully and set it aside for a second phase of nail removal. Careful of rusty nails. Dad, chill out. When you've collected a few boards, find a way to elevate them slightly and tap out all of the nails. I used a few scrap pieces of 2x4 lumber, but just about anything should work. gravity. Oh. Sir. Mahoney, the laws of gravity have begun to apply. Get a few scrap pieces of wood. Use them to create a gantry to elevate the board being separated. Then use another board to apply downward pressure on the support and the rest of the pallet. Thankfully, gravity is a friend and enables us to gently separate the boards. Like the leverage method, you'll end up with a board with nails sticking out of it. So please handle them with care and remove the nails in a similar fashion as we described earlier. I want results. First, let's talk about the speed showdown. The winner of our speed showdown was the power method. She's the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Power was by far the fastest way to tear down a pallet. I was able to tear down pallets one at a time in five minutes or less. When I stacked them up up to eight pallets high, the average tear down became about three minutes each. Look, I'm the fastest animal in the zoo. In second place for speed, we have 
the leverage method. Oh, his methods, supernatural. I used two different types of tools on the first batch of pallets I tore down. The time it took with this method was about 15 minutes to tear down the boards and 15 minutes to remove all the nails, for a total of about a half an hour per pallet. That is interesting, isn't it? The honorable mention in the speed category is the gravity method. Gravity takes a little bit longer than the leverage method because of having to move the boards between each separation. Move it, move it, move it. Next up is our quality evaluation. First place goes to the gravity method. You trust the quality, but you know, not quantity. The gravity method has zero cracking, chipping, and breaking of boards, unlike the leverage method, which has quite a few. Additionally, the gravity method created no minor tooling marks on the back side of the board, unlike the power method. The gentler action of the gravity method wins the quality competition hands down. John Coltrane, hands down. Runner up for quality, the power method. Zero cracking or splitting of any of the boards whatsoever with the power method, and the wood is in quite pristine condition with the exception of some minor tooling marks on the backside from the reciprocating saw. You can save a lot of time by leaving the nails in the wood, which may, for some, be considered a minor quality issue, which is why power ranks second overall. We uh, had a minor issue with our right engine, but we are all clear and ready to go. And of course, the third place and honorable mention for the quality category is the leverage method. Quality of the final product for your project wood is slightly less than ideal when you use a leverage method because the shear forces introduce a little more cracking and splitting of the wood. So if you're looking for clean, split-free, or crack-free wood, you might want to try one of our other approaches. Very good. Find out. Next up, we have our cost category. Money, money, money. The first place winner is gravity method. Well, it's gonna cost you. That's right, even if you had to buy a whole 2x4 to make a few scraps of wood, you could end up getting that 2x4 for less than $4, which makes it our cheapest method overall to execute. Since gravity is doing most of the work, you could even avoid using a hammer and just use a rock or any other object with some weight to execute the board separation. And you said you could get a good price on the lumber? All right, our second place finisher in the cost category is the leverage method. The major advantage of the leverage method is that tool cost is cheap. Most people already have a tool that they can use or that they can get fairly inexpensively, even if it's a hammer. However, the longer the lever, the easier time you'll have. Consider upgrading your hammer or buying a specialty tool if you're going to be doing more than one or two pallets. This one here cost me about $40 or $50 and ended up saving at least that much in chiropractic costs on my back not having to bend over so much. Call my chiropractor. And the third place finisher for cost, the power method. Time is money and will be a significant factor for most. If we strictly limit our analysis to the tool cost required to execute the method, then this turns out to be power's weakest link. This method requires purchase or prior ownership of power tools and special blades that make the process extremely efficient and easy. You can find corded reciprocal saws, also known as sawzalls, for about $25. If you're going to afford a 10 to 12 amp version or even one with battery power, you'll find that they make the job very easy to tackle. The blades I recommend are made by Diablo. They're carbide blades for nail embedded wood, and I highly suggest the 9 or 12 inch variety for this particular job. I found other blades to wear out quicker and take more time. They need more time. Which brings us to our last category. All right, the winner for our difficulty category, power. This is too much power for one person. The power method is super simple and quick to execute. It required minimal physical effort over the shortest amount of time and is the clear winner when it comes to difficulty. I see no difficulty in proceeding. Our runner-up spot for difficulty, the gravity method. The gravity method was almost as simple as the power method and only required a little bit more effort, mainly due to the moving of the gantry around. The physical stress required to execute the work is fairly minimal because gravity is helping you out quite a bit. I studied about it quite a bit. Now our honorable mention for the difficulty category in third place, leverage. Leverage was definitely the method that required the most physical muscle power. It's a muscle job. In the final analysis, it's the final result that counts. I think the biggest thing I learned was don't use a hammer or the leverage method for that matter. Quality suffers greatly, it takes a longer amount of time, and you're just physically more exhausted when the work is done. Now, if you have a lot of time to spare or only doing one or two pallets, then I would lean, pun intended, toward the gravity method. You get great quality, project-ready wood, cheaply and with easy execution. Now, we tore down over 30 pallets for this video. If you're gonna be operating at a large scale like that, then we hands down recommend the power method. It's speedy, has excellent quality results, and it's easy to justify the extra cost of entry because you know you'll be using that tool for many other applications. 
But let's look at the numbers. As you can see, overall, power comes in first place in our competition with a total of 10 points, followed by a close second of the gravity method with a total of nine, followed by leverage with a total of seven. I had a lot of fun making this video and I'm excited about the future projects we're gonna build from the stacks of Project Ready Wood we created. If you have another method that could reign supreme or have any thoughts to share about our contest, please share them in the comments section below. We have other projects and teardown videos for you to check out. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. If you hit that bell, you'll never miss a thing. That's all for this this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next dive. One more. Lots of pallets. <laughs> Let's see how you did. Dad, you would you like it? <laughs> now say cut. Cut. Now we're rolling. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Done. My turn. Cut. All right.